So we find out in this chapter the bamboo spirit was actually just some weird nomad guy on stilts. A uh, little hokey if you ask me, but, uh, you know, we'll see. Yeah, what piece? Uh, chapter 305, uh, Foxy the, the Silver Fox. <laughs> Alright, I've got no clue what's going on here, but it's a little bit strange. So, well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim, here to bring you another review on the awesome and long-ish tale of One Piece. Our last chapter, of course, saw us with uh, really them, you know, reaching this this island and uh, and Luffy and uh, Usopp and Chopper, of course, going ashore and uh, and then Luffy breaking some kind of piece of bamboo and them seeing this person that they thought was some kind of spirit that came out of the bamboo and then the chapter ended with, uh, of course, uh, seeing that these foxy pirates had uh, had you know boxed in the Going Merry and the, and the rest of the crew that was on there. So that's how things left off and that's where things pick up, at least back with Luffy and company. The majority of the chapter actually takes place with them. We find out that the bamboo uh, spirit was not actually a spirit. It was this dude, Tonjit, who's a nomad and Tonjit apparently Apparently was on. He was trying to, you know, get in the Guinness Book of World Records for being on the world's longest or largest stilts. And he got up on these things, and he's been up there for ten years. Um, this is kind of another one of those like weird things where they went off to that, like you know, like, like at the beginning. Um, in between, I think, the second and third arcs or whatever, you know, where they wound up going and uh, and going off on that island with the strange creatures and then ran into that dude that was in the treasure chest with the big afro. Um, this is kind of one of those weird sort of things, you know, because this guy, so he's a nomad, he's been up on stilts for 10 years, he got up there and it was so high up that he was scared to get back down. Um, and it just, just kind of weird, but there was, and then the bamboo kept growing during that time, so it got even more harrowing to get back down, but Luffy, you know, kicks and breaks one of the pieces of bamboo, and he falls down, and, he, and he's, and he's cool, he's just got a little bit of a bloody nose. Anyway, um, this dude... Uh, goes and I guess he, he survived for the 10 years because he was able to eat fruit and stuff like that off the trees and apparently just, you know, would just piss and shit and just it would go down into nowhere. But he couldn't see, you know, what was going on down there. So he gets down there and he's like, come on into my home and, you know, we'll have some milk and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, then I can go to the village. And he's like, wait, the village is gone. Uh, so apparently everybody pulled up roots while he was up on these incredibly tall stilts and, and nobody could see him up there. Um, and his and his whole tribe or what have you of nomads just pulled up roots and left. And then he goes and he explains about how this island's called Long Ring Long Land, and he explains that it's because it's actually it looks like it appears like it's ten small islands in a circle, right? And they're on one of them. And every year the tide for a few hours gets low enough to where it actually reveals that it's one big ring of an island. And so every every year or every three years then, so every year you get a chance to move to move if you need to. But every three years his tribe moves from island to island. So I don't know why he, but knowing that, why was he surprised that they were gone then? He was up there for 10 years. So a lot of things to, to me just don't really fall into place too well and seem kind of odd with this. Um, and it seems a little bit hokey, but whatever, you know, we'll get through it here. <laughs> so uh, it just doesn't really add up to me a lot of the different things. Nonetheless, though, I don't think that this character is going to wind up being a, a major character of importance. But anyway, he talks about how, uh, so basically now it being 10 years, they're probably at least three islands over, and he's going to have to wait for, you know, about 30 years for them to come back around, so another 20, you know, minus the 10 that he's been waiting up there, depending on when they left and everything else. We also go and we wind up finding out that that horse, Sherry, actually was his horse and stayed back, stayed behind for him, um, obviously being a loyal animal, uh, you know, stayed through thick and thin and everything else, uh, knowing that, you know, he would come back one day, I guess. So... He talks about Sherry, and Sherry's this cool horse, and they're so majestic, and basically talks about how everything on the island being longer or wider, you know, like a dachshund is a dachshund, and a duck is a duck, and just adds extra vowels and just extra letters to it. So, again, kind of strange. doesn't really explain anything about it. It says that there's dangerous animals, too, like a snow leopard, you know. And that one's widened out. And again, I don't know what the significance is of that on this island. I just know that it, it's kind of odd and there's no real, like, plausible explanation for it. And knowing that it's a work of fiction, it's not like it's a big deal to me. Obviously, we're just up in Skypea and a land up in the sky. But this is just, this is like almost borderline, like, you know, just like silly. Um, I don't know though. We, you know, again, I'm gonna you know, reserve judgment for when I actually get through the arc over here. So, nonetheless, he goes and he winds up. He's all excited. He jumps on his horse uh, after he goes. Well, first he winds up eating some bad food and gets food poisoning. The milk that was milk is now cheese, but it's just aged ten years. Luffy wants to eat it. There's a bunch of that nonsense going on. 
But anyway, and then, and then anytime anybody's ever hurt, Chopper's, Chopper's always like, we need a doctor. That's his whole thing. And he's like, oh, wait, I'm a doctor. And uh, and it, it's cute, but at the same time, it's just like, shut up, you're a doctor. You know you're the doctor. So uh, anyway, this guy, Tunjit, winds up finding out that his horse is actually there, waited for him all these years. He's excited that Sherry's there, jumps on and, and starts, you know, galloping across in this majestic looking thing. And then all of a sudden, bam, you know, and the horse goes, you see blood flying, the horse goes down. Or What the hell? They know it was a gunshot that was heard and everything else. So Luffy and uh, Luffy and Usopp and Chopper come running. Now, mind you, everybody else is still back on the boat. Uh, Robin and Zoro and Sanji and Nami, right? So they're all back on the boat, and this is how the volume ends up over here. We wind up seeing as they kind of come over the ridge, uh, you know, they wind up seeing in the distance that there was somebody. Luffy, of course, is pissed off. He's like, who the heck are you people? And then we get this cool, almost double-page spread of the, who am I, do you ask? Don't tell me you don't recognize my face. And then the chick's like, rude, aren't they? And you see this group of kind of misfit ragtag pirates. We've got uh, Porsche, or Porchy. Uh, I'll go with Porsche. Foxy Pirates Warrior. Then we've got Foxy the Silver Fox. Foxy Pirates Captain. Bounty. 24 million berries. Yeah, Luffy could wipe his ass with 24 million berries at this point, but whatever. That, that's fine. And then we've got Hamburg, the Foxy Pirates Warrior, you know. So, uh, anyway, apparently, though, he doesn't recognize them, doesn't know who they are, you know, and, and they, just, they think that they should be well known. However, um, you know, we get this whole thing at the end where he says, We, the Foxy Pirates, challenge you, the Straw Hat Pirates, to a three coin Davy back fight run by Orthodox rules. And then you get Luffy's just pissed. He just wants to nail somebody, right? What are you talking about? Hurry up and come at me. <laughs> I just love that. Come on, come at me, bro. And he's like, if you want a match, I'll take you on. And then we get this whole thing, and it's kind of cool. Usopp goes and puts two and two together. That ship that they saw that was missing, like a captain and a navigator and some crews, some of their crew members. He's like, hey, Luffy, wait. No, you can't. You can't. You can't. Not that game. We'll lose our companions. So the only thing that I can think of is that that's what that significance was of that ship that was out there minus some crew members, that they lost some key crew members. Uh, whether they were killed or whether they, they they participated in this Davy back fight, whatever this is, a three-coin or, uh, orthodox rules. I don't even know what all that means. I'm sure they'll explain it soon. But nonetheless, though, uh, we figure out that's what happened to that crew, and that's why they lost some of their significant members on the crew, uh, as far as we know for sure, the captain and the navigator. Um, you know, so is this going to be a similar situation? You know, is this not really a battle? Is it more of like a battle of wits? I don't really know at this point, you know, but this Davy back three well, orthodox rules we'll find out about, I guess, in the next volume. That's how we wrap up the chapter. That's how we wrap up the amazing fun volume over here. So we'll be diving into 33, of course, next. And uh, in all in all, you know, I can't say it was a bad chapter, but I also can't say that it was a good chapter. I, I guess probably I'm just kind of undecided on it because I don't really understand what's going on yet. And some of the stuff with the Long Ring, Long Island stuff and this whole, you know, this Tunjit guy, it seems a little hokey to me. You know, it seems a little hokey, a little silly. It seems like there's some certainly some gaps in, you know, even the stretched logic thinking that you use, uh, you know, when you are reading something like One Piece, a work of fiction. But... Uh, but nonetheless, though, I'm still excited to dive into the next one and see what the hell is going on uh, and to see if what, you know, are Zoro and Sanji being held by them or, or did they already agree to something, you know, or, or what? So and definitely want to see what the rules are of this whole thing. So, uh, but it was cool to get introduced to some new characters. My chapter question for you, though, brothers and sisters, and this may be an obvious one that I'm just missing over here, but this dude Tanjit, he's up on the stilts for tenure. Wouldn't he try to, like, throw a coconut down at somebody and let him know what was going on? I mean, honestly, come on, how tall can these stilts really be? You know, is it really that important to get in the Guinness Book of World Records or whatever he was trying to do? And then when you go and you come down, he, he, had, the, he had the wherewithal to know that he was up there for 10 years, right? But... You really, you didn't. You don't know why the village is up and gone of of your people, even though you just tell everybody in the next paragraph that every three years they move from island to island. Uh, I don't know. Somebody can answer that one and unravel that mystery for me. Maybe I'm just missing something, but leave it in the comments down below. Uh, you know, but ultimately, feel free to hit those thumbs up, the like button, uh, if you think I deserve it, and uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already. We will look forward to catching all of you in the next vanation. Remember to follow me on Twitter and Facebook and even my other channel if you desire.